Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Jensen's. Hope that you're doing well. If there is one thing that everybody hates, it's buying something that you think is completely legitimate, completely authentic, and it turns out to be fake. I don't think anybody's ever been pumped about that. Ah, sweet. I just bought my new Louis Vuitton bag and it's fake. Nice. Ah, oh, dude, check out these new sick fake Nikes that I bought. <laughs> They're totally awesome. They're already falling apart. This is a good look. And of course that carries over to fragrances. And lately I have noticed a big influx of fake fragrances. And here's the bad part. They actually look really good. It used to be that fake fragrances were easy to pick apart. You would look at them immediately and be like, ah, that's, that's junk, that's total trash. Like if you get fooled by that, you deserve it. But the counterfeiters, the scammers, they've gotten better. So as I said, I've noticed a lot of fake fragrances hitting the market, flooding the market, and I decided to put my money out there, scoop some of them up, and then get them in to show you guys what to look for. So I bought three different fragrances, and these are not going for pennies on the dollar. We'll talk about that as we go on, but these are going for a decent amount of money. But anyway, I bought three of them, a discontinued fragrance that's in high demand, a really popular niche fragrance, and a really popular designer fragrance. And I'm gonna show you guys those here today up close and personal and kind of walk you through everything so hopefully you don't get taken advantage of. Because these are not the only fragrances that are out there right now. Like I said, there's a bunch. And I've actually already sent out a couple emails about this to my mailing list. So if you're part of that mailing list, you've already seen those. If you're not part of the mailing list, it's in the description. Feel free to sign up. Basically, if any big deals pop up, I'll let you guys know through that mailing list and also different things that catch my eye like this. I don't spam you, it's typically like one email every week or week and a half or something, but that's in the description. Along with the three actual legitimate fragrances that I'm gonna talk to you guys about here today. So which three fragrances did I buy? Well, let's start off with the discontinued one. And that would be this one, Giorgio Armani Code Profumo. Really, really popular when it was out. Actually, a lot of people's favorite Armani Code, period. Really sweet, big compliment puller, very sexy, warm, spicy. And since it's been discontinued, the price has risen and people are still looking for it. So it makes sense to fake. The really popular niche fragrance I got is probably one of the biggest niche releases of the past decade. And it's Angel Share from By Killian. Another one that's warm, sweet, spicy, sexy, big compliment puller once again. So I figured let's get that one. And then last but not least, the popular designer. But I didn't want it to be just any designer. I wanted it to be more expensive designer fragrance because of course, those are the ones where people are gonna be looking for deals because they're gonna see what it typically goes for and go, maybe I can get it for a little bit less, hmm. which might lead to you getting scammed. And the fragrance is Sauvage Elixir. So these three are the fragrances that I bought and it cost me about $200 to pick these three up after factoring in taxes. And of course, I already own these three fragrances that I purchased earlier on when they were brand new. So there they are. These are the ones that I purchased. These are the ones I already own. Like I said, the fakes are getting better, <laughs> a lot better. I can show you some gnarly, funky looking fakes that I picked up even like two years ago that were way worse looking. Uh, but the fakers have gotten better. So I guess first off, let's talk about where I bought these, who I bought these from, and then we'll start working through these and do a side-by-side -side comparison of each one. That way you know what to look for. And as time goes on, if you guys want me to, I'll buy more fake fragrances, probably as a one-off, like particular fragrances, and compare them to the real deal. That way you guys can see what's up. And so you're a little bit more educated toward these fakes. Just let me know if you want me to do that and I will buy those up for you. It's actually kind of interesting to see the fakes if I'm honest. So get everything lined up real nice and pretty here. Yeah. All right, first off, where are you more likely to run into fake fragrances? Right now, I will tell you straight up, eBay, 
is flush with fakes. eBay is like overrun at this point. Amazon also a good amount of fakes there as well. So those websites where, where you have individual sellers that are selling to you are gonna be a little more high risk. And by a little more, I mean a lot more. And you may think, nobody's buying those fakes. Oh, people are buying them. People are buying them in mass. I looked through a bunch of different listings where I knew that they were fake. I just knew it. I, I obviously didn't have them in my hands yet, but I was like, those are 99.9% .9 gonna be fake. That's why I bought these to begin with. Then when I got them in, I was like, ah, suspicions confirmed. But there are so many listings on there right now that I looked through where it's like 110 people have bought, 15 people have bought, 73 people have bought, just all these listings. You go through, you add those up, thousands and thousands of fake bottles are moving through eBay right now, every single day. Same thing on Amazon. And I'll let you know the sellers that I purchased these from, but to be honest with you, they're those type of throwaway fake names that should scream red flag, but obviously they don't uh, to a lot of people out there and they'll probably just cancel those accounts and open up a new one. So when it comes to eBay, Amazon, if you have an inkling of doubt, I wouldn't purchase there right now. There are fakes galore. Obviously the safest places to purchase are gonna be directly from the brand, from retailers like Macy's, Nordstrom, Ulta, Sephora, etc., cetera, or uh, very well respected discounters. So it's gonna be like your Joma shop, fragrance buy places like that, that are very firmly established. Oh, and by the way, since we're talking discounters, codes, here they are. You know the drill, the new codes for Joma Shop only work on the Joma Shop app. They will save you money if you shop there. If you guys for some reason don't know what Joma Shop is, it's a discounter. They sell fragrances for discounted prices that are actually legit, not fakes. So that'll save you some money if you shop there. Uh, Max Aroma, two new codes for them. And then uh, fragflex.com, the perfume box. All of these stores are legitimate and those codes will save you money if you shop at any of those stores for your fragrances. And those will also be linked in the description. Now, this does not happen quite as often anymore, but it used to be there would be fragrance websites that would pop up all the time. And they would be like, you know, new, just popped up, and they would have uh, fragrances listed for a lot less than even at discounters. And those were always fake. <laughs> you would have something for sale for like $25 on these websites, that was 85 at discounters. And people would be like, are those legit? Are those legit? And, and they would be told no, and then they would still place an order and get ripped off. So be aware of that, but it doesn't happen quite as much anymore. Let's get into these actual comparisons now. Uh, the first one, Armani Code Profumo. So this one I paid $59.99 for on eBay. So again, that pricing, is high enough that it can fool some people because the way they used to do fakes is they would put them at absolutely goofy prices, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, or like a really expensive niche fragrance, they would put it at like 35, 40. And you would be able to go like, ah, that's so low. Like, why? There's gotta be something wrong with it. Well, yeah, it's fake. I've noticed that what fakers are doing now, what scammers are doing is they're charging more so it looks legit, but they're still charging way less than what it's actually worth. So Code Profumo, this is not a $59.99 fragrance, okay? You can easily get double, triple that all day because it's a fragrance that people liked, that's discontinued, it's hard to find, but there's still demand. Why would they sell it for $59.99? Ask yourself that. It's not because they're a super nice person and they're going like, look, man, I know I could make triple, but I'm a nice guy. I'm gonna take the L here. I'm gonna sell all of these hundreds of bottles. How did I get them? <sighs> you don't need to know that, but I got hundreds of bottles. I'm gonna sell all of these for a steep discount because I'm just that kind of person. They're not gonna do that. They don't care about you. They're ripping you off, okay? Uh, and this one is really unfortunate because uh, this listing right here is one of many, but this listing already has 88 people that have purchased this listing, this fragrance from the seller I bought from. By the way, the person I bought that from, K-I-M-B-W-A-L-6672, 97.8% positive ratings or reviews, whatever. And here are a couple of those. 
This was a blind buy for me and I can't put into words how great it smells. I absolutely love it. The seller shipped super quick and packaged it perfectly. So it made it all the way to Alaska in perfect condition. Thank you so much. And I look forward to doing business with the seller again in the future. Don't. And then another review, exactly as described, 100% authentic. Why Le Parfum? Thank you, e-seller. And then just in the one blurry picture that they posted, I can already tell that's a fake bottle of wine. So many people getting ripped off. All right, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is an up close side by side of the fake and the real fragrance so you can see the differences. I'll point those out to you. I'll also let you know how the fake smells. So let's get started with the boxes. Sit these over here for now. And we'll start with the front of the boxes. First thing you'll notice, it is a slight difference, but the legitimate box is actually ever so slightly taller than the fake. So just a, a little difference in terms of height there. Another thing you'll notice that's different is the font on the front of the box. The OG, the real thing, has more of an ambery copper coloration to the font. It's gold on the fake. Also on the fake, it looks a little bit off just in terms of the font itself. It's a little bit thicker. It's not quite as elegant looking, I guess you would say. It's really close, really close, but it's still slightly off and you can compare them side by side. Also the coloration of the boxes themselves are different. So on the original, it's more of this uh, deep black, the box itself, whereas on the fake, it has kind of like a grayish tinge to it. The embossing at the bottom where it says uh, 110 mil, 3.7 fluid ounces, is almost smudgy on the fake. Also where it says Giorgio Armani, it feels a little off, it's slightly smudged. And if you run your finger over the front where it says Giorgio Armani, you can't feel that at all on the fake. On the real thing, you can feel a slight raise on the lettering. If you go to the top of the box, once again, it's a little more smudgy uh, on the fake and also the sizing is wrong. It's a little bit larger on the real deal. All right, we look at the back of the box and once again, I know it's becoming a common theme here, but the lettering is off. The font is wrong, it's a little bit smudged, it has a different coloration to it, it doesn't look as nice. So you can look at the back of the box and tell right away, like, oh, that's that's not right. It's gonna be the same deal on the side of the box where it says Armani Code Profumo. Coloration is wrong, it's not as fine in terms of the font itself, and uh, just looks ever so slightly cheaper. And then, once again, same deal, on the bottom of the box. It's just the same thing repeating all the way around in terms of the font being off, in terms of it having a smudged look to it instead of having a fine look to it. The color scheme is wrong. And uh, one thing I wanna point out is a lot of times, actually I would say all the time now at this point, uh, scammers will use correct batch codes. So they'll use a real batch code on the bottle, on the box. And for the longest time, people would check the batch code online. They'd go to like check fresh, put in the batch code and it would spit back that it was a correct batch code and they'd go, oh, well, it's legit then. No, they can get those batch codes easy. You know, all they have to do is buy one bottle and they can just take that same batch code and slap it on everything and it's going to come back as a correct batch code. So just because your fake has a batch code on it that links up online and says, oh, it's, it's good, it's legit, doesn't mean your fragrance is legit. They caught on to that a long time ago. <laughs> I'm talking about the scammers. And one other thing is back in the day, fakes often had misspellings all through. You know, back here with the ingredients and everything, you'd have just butchered ingredients. They would be completely misspelled. At this point, they're basically just taking this copy pasting. One thing you will notice on the fake here is that uh, where the font is wrong on the back, they do have the same ingredients, but because the fonting and spacing is different, the fonting, because it's different, uh, it actually reads differently through the ingredient list. Not in terms of what's actually there, but for example, on the second line, it says on the OG, Fragrance Aqua Slash Water Coumarin. Then if you go to the fake, it says Fragrance Aqua Slash Water Coumarin Ethyl Hexyl. So that's another thing to look for there. And with this one, 
I actually saw in the reviews and the feedback from the seller I purchased from, somebody that had purchased two bottles of this. And they had taken the picture of the two bottles side by side. It was actually the two boxes, I guess, where they had just gotten it in. And they were like, oh, such a great deal. I'm so glad I got this because they saw the listing and they thought, oh man, code Profumo for 60 bucks. I better get two bottles right now. So they paid the scammer 120 bucks and they're super happy about it, posting like, oh, look at this, not realizing they're holding a fake because a lot of people that are purchasing these don't have the OG to compare against. So that's why we're doing this now. So those are the boxes. Let's check out the bottles. All right, first thing you're gonna notice is on the front, the fake has once again, not gotten the font correctly. So it looks a little bit different. It's not as fine as the original and the coloration is way off. So it has a darker, almost maroon color to the font on the fake one, whereas the OG, has that uh, more copper coloration to it. Also, one thing that you'll notice, the glass is thicker in the original. So down there at the bottom, you can see it very clearly. It's a thicker glass, whereas the fake is not quite so thick. Another thing you'll notice is the gradient. So the gradient on the original is very well done. You don't see any speckling or any spots or anything like that. It just goes from black down to uh, a slightly dark translucent at the bottom here. And with the fake, you have these kind of uh, dots, like little speckles as the gradient goes from black to clear. So it's most prominent right in this region right here. But when you hold them up side by side, it is immediately apparent that the gradient on the original is much nicer, much higher quality. Whereas you can clearly see <laughs> on the fake uh, that it's not quite so nice. Also, the coloration of the fragrance is different. So at the bottom where you can see through, uh, you can see it's darker, the original here, and mm, a slight yellowish tinge on the fake. The stickers on the bottom are a little bit different as well. That's one thing you'll see across all of these. They're similar. They're real similar to the point that if you didn't know any better, you'd look at that and be like, that is legit. That's a legit sticker. But when you look at them side by side, you go, oh, it's off a little bit. Again, it's mainly the font, the text size, a little different, uh, misplaced um, symbols on there. So you wanna take a look at those really closely. Also, one thing that's very obvious, the coloration of the caps, they are different. The caps themselves look really similar outside of that coloration difference though. Uh, the GA up top is slightly different. On the original, it's flat across the top of the cap. Whereas on the fake, it does have a little dip to it. So that may not be obvious on camera, I'm not sure, but me standing here looking at them, it's very clear with the light hitting that this one is flat across and the other dips down like a little bowl. Another thing on the fake, this, the little black wraparound portion of the bottle. So on the original, it looks nice all the way around. No fusion points or anything like that. It looks well done. When you look at the fake, it does look definitely cheaper. When you go side by side, it's immediately apparent. And there are fusion points, two of them. So there's one right here and one right here, where it looks like a piece of plastic was put together and then swoop, fused right there. That's not on the original. There's also a bit of a gap that goes all the way around this black piece where you can kind of work your nail under, see, like that. Whereas with the original, it sits nice and flush. These are things that at first glance you say, oh, that that's Profumo. And then you look at it and you go, oh, no it ain't. At least if you know what to look for. Once again, that fusion point that I talked to you about, on the original, you can't see it here, right? It's just smooth all the way around. On the fake, you can clearly see right there, right there, that fusion point. And the atomizers themselves are different. Different color and also different in look. And let's do a couple sprays of the original. There we go. And now the fake. Atomizer much worse on the fake. So let's give it a smell. This is something that I find kind of interesting, that they've gone through all this trouble, all this hassle of doing the box pretty close, the bottle pretty close, the fragrance sucks. I can't imagine anybody buying this 
and fooling themselves into thinking, ah, oh, that's, that's the real deal, baby. Honestly, it's bad. Thankfully, it's kind of weak as well, <laughs> but there we go. And the cap is a little harder to put on on the fake. So it smells not really that close to Profumo. I mean, what it comes across more like is kind of a chalky, half Play-Doh-y, spicy thing. And there are actually really cheap fragrance clones at this point that actually smell good, that are similar to Code Profumo or Code Absolute. Harmony Code Absolute, for example, by Fragrance World, real cheap, smells really close to Code Absolute. It's way cheaper than this fake and it smells 10,000 times better. You could also get Armani Code Eau de Parfum at this point, and that actually smells pretty close to Code Profumo, assuming you get the new Code Eau de Parfum in the new presentation style. You can get Sapil Bound, real cheap, real cheap, like under $20. It's not as good as Harmony Code Absolute. It's not as good as Code Eau de Parfum, but if you don't wanna spend that much money, it'll get you pretty close to this. This is trash. So anyone who bought this, if you look at your bottle and it's looking like this, try to get a refund if you can. You got duped. This does not smell like Code Profumo. If you've never smelled Code Profumo and you're smelling this thinking, I don't get the hype, it's because you bought a cheap fake. So that's Code Profumo. Let's move on. I'm sorry this video is probably going to run long. Like I said, in the future, if you want me to do more of these, it'll just be like one fragrance that we'll do. That way it's quicker. But I wanted to make super sure what I thought was going on is going on and it is. Angel Share, super popular. Everybody loves Angel Share, right? I know some people don't, but we'll just pretend they do. I love it. I think it's great. There are a million clones of Angel Share out there. Some really good ones. Of course, there's Kamra from Latafa. There's uh, Solario Epic is very good from Dumont. Fragrance World has Royal Blend. Uh, there are a bunch. There are a lot of really nice ones out there. So again, it's one of those deals where people are thinking they're getting the real deal for a lower price, but instead they're getting duped. So I bought this one from F-A-W-E-L-L, Fawel51, who has 100% positive feedback. And interestingly enough, uh, the person I bought this from, Savage Elixir, different username, same seller as this one. Came from the same person, same address. So that same person has multiple accounts set up where they're selling fakes. So if one of them gets taken down, they've got however many other ones going on. Some of the feedback from people that purchased this, Awesome transaction with this seller. Product came to me just as it was described. The packaging was well done and the shipping came to me faster than expected. $57.99 was the price that I paid for this one. Let's start off with the boxes. First thing that you'll notice, and I don't know why they did this. Actually, I saw some feedback from people where they were like, oh, it's so awesome, where you can clearly see it's this box, but what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Angel Share by Killian on the rocks. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not Angel Share on the rocks. It's, it's right away, you can look at that and go, oh, fake, nice. It should just say Angel Share by Killian. One thing that you'll notice if you have these side by side, and unfortunately, if you don't, maybe it'll be a little harder to do this, but if you have these side by side, you'll notice right away on the fake that the sticker that says Angel Share is shinier than the real deal. So the real deal is kind of a flatter black in terms of the coloration, whereas this is like a, a shiny black sticker. Also, the sticker on the original is thicker. This is a little thin sticker on the fake. Then on the uh, bottom here, where it says Eau de Parfum, 50 mil, all that good stuff, the font is a little bit thicker. Again, on the fake, you'll notice that a lot. A lot of times they don't quite get the font right. It's usually thicker, not quite as thin and elegant looking as the original. And interestingly, it's the opposite down here. It's shinier the gold portion on the real versus the fake. Now this is a, a stupid boo-boo that they did. I don't know if they're all like this or just mine, but the K is backwards on top of the box. So facing forward, right? And then you do this, the K should be uh, facing you correctly. Instead it's upside down on the fake. So they screwed that up. The sticker is in different spots as well. So on my OG box on the original, Stickers here on the fake, 
it is there. Now, I don't know, it's possible that Killian moved the sticker from here to here at some point. Uh, you can let me know in the comments, but that is the difference between the two. And once again, uh, same thing with the font, a little smudged looking on the fake and uh, slightly off, a little bit thicker once more. But there's not a whole heck of a lot going on with the Angel Share box. So outside of those things, pretty close. Uh, one other weird thing though, is mine came with this inside the fake. Now this is inside some of the Vicillian fragrances too, but you'll see this is actually not for angel share. This says Lair Vare's distinctive green color is naturally created by the chlorophyll found in blah, 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 blah. It's for the wrong fragrance, but they stuck it in here to make it look more legit because you, you get this and you go, oh, look at that little Killian piece of paper. Fake wouldn't have that. Also, one other thing, the foam, slightly different, but that's gonna be difficult for you to tell unless you have the two side by side. The foam is thicker uh, in the fake than it is in the original. So it creates a slightly different look. So I popped these bottles down in here pretty nice and tight. And if you take a look at those, you'll see that the original stands up a bit taller. And that's because of that difference in the foam height in the boxes. So in the original, the point of the sticker is pretty much even with the foam. Whereas on the fake, the sticker is actually down inside of the foam there. So that's one other thing to take a look at as far as the box goes now, the bottle. And the bottle, is easier to tell. First thing you'll notice is once again, the coloration is off. So the original has a deeper ambery color and this one is more yellowish brown. So the fake off just ever so slightly there in terms of color. Once again, the bottle is very clearly thicker with the real deal, extremely obvious there which interestingly enough, I think means this might be more than 50 mils. <laughs> so, yay. Another thing I noticed in the real deal, the cap, you can spin it, but it doesn't really spin freely. As you can see here on the fake, you can just spin that bad boy. So, ooh, it spun it off. You can see there versus that. The sticker on the front is also different. So if you look, at the fake. It looks almost like um, strip tape, you know, like 3M strip tape or whatever. It has that kind of feel to it uh, underneath, if you can look at it from the side. Probably hard to see on camera, whereas if you look at the original, it looks more just metallic the whole way around, which is kind of hard to see on camera probably, but if you have them side by side, it's very obvious that this one is being boosted up, lifted up with foam underneath there. And this one doesn't have that look. Also, the font on the sticker is off ever so slightly. Once again, the color of the gold is off ever so slightly. That does become more difficult if you don't have one to compare to. So you have to look at all the other things, but if you have an OG, an original side-by-side -side with the fake, you can tell. Another thing, the cap is not aligned correctly on the fake. So on the original, you can align it so that all these marks in the glass match the cap. And these three little lines here on the front, you line them up. And then if you do like this, the K is facing straight up and down. Now, if you go to the fake and you put the K straight up and down, it looks like that. It's off. If you line it up, the K is crooked. And once again, it just bends anyway. One of the most obvious extreme examples of being able to immediately point out that one is a fake is also in the cap of the Killian. And that's right here. There is a big mark right in the center where the K is. And I'm assuming that's probably where they snip these. Could be wrong there, but uh, it looks like where, you know, the cap is formed and then um, there's like an impression right there in the middle that this does not have. And while we're at it, there's also a 
K that they slap onto the top of the atomizer just to be safe when it's not actually there in the original. Unless Killian once again started doing that after the first run of the fragrance, uh, but that is the difference between these two for me. And the sticker kind of wants to peel off on the fake, so that's also not good. Another thing you'll notice is the caps themselves are different colors. So the fake has this uh, very super clear color scheme to it, whereas there is like a maybe a slight hint of opacity to the real deal. Again, holding them up side by side, very obvious. And of course, the atomizers, once again, are different. Different coloration and a slightly different look as well. Let's go ahead and give these a spray. And I do have to say, if you have ever smelled Angel Share, then I would hope that when you smell this one, you would realize you've been had because this one is horrible. And you can see the atomizer is different as well, how it sprays. Here we go. <coughs> oh, it's, it's pretty gross, honestly. Now, maybe people get these in, don't know any better, convince themselves, well, that's just how it smells, must smell good. That's rough, guys. Although, to be fair, maybe some people would consider that a niche fragrance in terms of how it comes across. It's very, very tobacco forward. And when I say that, I don't mean it in like a pleasant pipe tobacco, honey tobacco. I mean like sickeningly sweet cigarette tobacco in a way. Now it gets a little more palatable as it dries, but off the top, it is strong and funky. Just a lot of tobacco, multiple forms, none of which smell super pleasant. Go back to Angel Share, like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> So there's Angel Share. Again, I really think that truly smells awful. I think that's the worst smelling one here. And now we come to Sauvage Elixir, which actually was the most expensive one here. So I paid $74.99, 75 bucks for this bottle. Uh, the seller B-A-E-A-K-E-E-25. -E -E same person, same address, same name, sold this one and this one, just two different accounts. 100% positive. And uh, 29 bottles of this have been sold through that listing. 14 had been sold through this listing. And here are a couple of the reviews, a couple of the feedbacks. Fast shipping, authentic product. Great eBayer, A++. And then love the scent, came earlier than expected. Very happy. Great. All right, box time, let's do it. First thing you'll notice is that the, uh, the gap that's between the bottom and top part of the box is smaller on the fake. So you have a little more of a gap on the actual fragrance. And uh, again, the color scheme, the coloration is a little bit different. On the Angel Share box, there's a slight difference in coloration, a little bit darker on the original, but here with these two, it's pretty noticeable when you have them side by side. So on the original, it has more of a deep navy blue color scheme. And on the fake, it's not quite as deep and not quite as rich in terms of the coloration. You'll also notice the uh, Sauvage Elixir font, the Dior font on the front, uh, on the fake. It's again, a little more smudged looking, not as fine, not as clear as in the original. And you also don't really have that, that window pane effect. So on the original, you have this little window pane effect here where it kind of dips in a little bit where it says Sauvage Elixir. Whereas on the fake, you can just take your finger and run it right across there. Now, they do an outline where they try to make it look like it has that, but it doesn't. Same thing you'll find on the top of the box where it says CD. If you run your finger across it here on the original, you can feel just ever so slightly. It kind of dips into the box there. On the fake, you can't because it doesn't. You can just go straight across. Another thing you'll notice is those little lines that go across the, the sides of the box. There are different thickness on the original versus the fake. So the original has finer lines and they're thicker, wider on the fake. You'll also notice those box folds. So those folds, you can find those all over the fake. You don't see those on the original. Same thing on the back. You can see two box folds down here on the fake, not on the original. On the bottom, once again, guys, what can I say? The font, the coloration is a little bit different. The sizing a little bit different. Uh, it's just slightly off. They copied pretty much everything you would expect them to copy. 
You know, they've got the same words, they've got the same look, overall the placement of the barcode, but it's off, just slightly off. And then if we open these up, you'll see they even faked the little B on the inside, but they didn't quite get it. Once again, the B is smaller on the fake, looks a little lower quality. It has almost like little dots in the paint where the B is there. Uh, where it didn't paint smoothly or sit smoothly because it's this cheap cardboard instead of this nice smooth cardboard on the bottom of the original. And also the foam is different once again. So the foam is thicker in the fake and also harder. So if you kind of squish this foam in the original, it's very squishy. It doesn't uh, have a lot of like pushback, but on the fake, it's just a hard, cheap foam. And if we sit, the bottles down inside there. This is the original. This is the fake. You can see how they sit. Very different. So the fake kind of wobbles in there. The OG, a little bit snugger. And you can see that the original sits up higher, kind of like it's being presented, right? And the very bottom right here, where the window starts, if we want to call it that, that's where it sits. So right where that starts, that's where it sits. Whereas in the fake, put that down in there, it sinks down in and Dior is basically where it starts. So again, side by side, you can see how those sit in there and that's a pretty good giveaway. All right, guys, let's do it. Let's tackle the bottle. Again though, to reiterate, I think you guys got to admit these fakes are getting a little too close for comfort. Kinda hate it. By kinda, I mean I do. All right, bottles, side by side. First thing is the coloration. And it's kinda difficult to see unless you are in a good amount of light. But the actual Christian Dior Sauvage Elixir bottle is more of a deep navy blue. The fake also is a deep navy blue, but it's a little bit darker. So in some lighting situations, it's more obvious. In others, it's not. The positioning, of Sauvage on the front is different. On the original, it's a little bit lower. Once again, the font, slightly different. It's a little bit of a finer font. On the bottom, they even copied the CD for Christian Dior. Yeah, it is a bit smaller, the CD, on the fake compared to the original. Another thing I noticed is the glass itself. Uh, on the original, you don't have any of these little lines along the bottom. On the fake, you have three. So there's like a small line here, here, and here. They don't really stick out, but if you look at it under a light, you can clearly see them. And on the original, they're not there. Also, once again, the font's a little bit different. It's in a different position as well on the fake compared to the original. And this is kind of ridiculous, but on the fake Sauvage Elixir, they've even etched the batch code into the glass. Yeah. So again, you can't just look at this and go, oh, there's a batch code etched into the glass. It's gotta be real because they even did that. Uh, the CD on top of the caps. Once again, you can take your finger, run it across on the original and you'll feel the little divots where the CD is on the fake, flat across. One thing you would think is that, well, the original Savage magnetic cap, right? Well, also magnetic. Well. You can spin this one, right? Most fakes can't do that. Yeah, the fake cap even actually works with the original, but the CD is misaligned because the way it should look is like this. But when you put the fake cap on, still pretty nuts and they have it aligned correctly for the fake. Oh, but there's a little B on the inside of uh, the Sauvage Elixir cap. There it is, very small, hard to see. They wouldn't fake that, except they did. <laughs> this is freaking crazy. There is one difference between these two little Bs on the inside though. If you look at the legs and the antenna of the B on the inside of the original, it has like some little, almost squiggles, you know, like bug legs. They're not perfectly straight, right? They have kind of uh, little meandering parts. Whereas if you look on the inside, see the B and the fake, 
Um, it has completely straight antenna, straight legs. It's hard to tell what I'm talking about unless you see them side by side, and then you'll go, oh, ever so slightly more attention to detail on the original. If you look at the atomizers, once again, a little bit different. CD on top, different. It's larger on the fake. Also, the fake atomizer looks plasticky, and the original looks more metallic, like it has a little higher quality to it, but still very close. And the atomizers on the original, pressurized, of course, we all know that. The fake one is a pretty good atomizer, but it's not pressurized. Check it out. It's good, almost good enough, but not quite. So let's do that side by side. I'm dying right now and Savage Elixir is just taking me over, but here we go. Close. Now the smell. Once again, it kind of sucks. I think that's the most interesting part about this is there are clone fragrances that you can get, 25 bucks, that smell 10 times better than these fakes. I mean, screw these guys, I'm just saying. So this one probably gets the closest to the real deal, but it's still not really close. It has, again, this kind of chalky undertone to it, like Play-Doh with hints of uh, Sauvage Elixir in it, but it's lacking that spice, that woodiness, that depth. Nobody's gonna get confused which one's which. Like you could take these two and uh, do like a little, you know, circus type deal and uh, have them be blindfolded. And then when they smell them, they're not gonna go, oh, I can't tell which is which. As I said at the beginning of the video, I was pretty sure these were fake. I mean, who is realistically selling a brand new inbox angel share for under 60 bucks? But I understand the psychology behind it because there are people out there who see what they're going for at discounters or at retail and they think, oh, this is just an amazing deal. And then what's even worse is a lot of these people don't know what to look for. And these fakes are close enough that if you really don't know what you're looking for outside of you've seen it in a store before and you go, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's how I remember it. You don't have anything else to go on. You see all these other people that have bought it you see these uh, reviews, these feedbacks left where people are like, oh, it's great, it's amazing, it's fantastic, and they've got pictures of what they got. You go, oh, must be legit. So I want to put this out there. Hopefully uh, some people can find this who were thinking about buying some of these or who did buy them and they can get their money back. I know fragrances can get expensive, trust me. Uh, that's why discounters exist, right? But it's that, that age old maxim. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. And I don't think this is gonna stop anytime soon. They are obviously getting better at doing this and that's not good. If you guys want, like I said, let me know. I'll buy other fragrances that are fake and uh, we'll keep on doing this. The next one I was thinking about purchasing is Layton because I have seen a lot of listings on eBay for like 70, 75 and same deal. People are gonna think what an amazing purchase and just get totally screwed. Thank you guys so much for hanging with me. I know this was long, I apologize for that, uh, but there's a lot to go over and uh, I wanted to make sure that, you know, people who are questioning this had enough information because there are no doubt people out there who bought some of this stuff who are kind of pulled bottles out and start being like, oh my God, we'll watch. Oh my God, this one's fake. Thank you guys so much for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.